Thank you for listening. This next talk is going to be one that I I think I've already given um, a talk with the same title or very similar. And I know um, Paul Twitchell gave a talk with the same title um, or very similar. So I apologize. I think there's a reason why I keep giving this talk or different versions. Um, the talk is Personality versus the Message of Varden, an Out-of-Body Soul Projection. Very, very similar to to um, another talk I gave, I believe, as far as the title. But it's very important. This personality is really the cow or negative power uh, personified. And um, we can use the personality as a vehicle to express uh, the Varden, which is divine spirit. Or we can use the personality to express the cow, which is the negative, um, the calistic um, energy, which is a mixture. It's a twin mixture of positive and negative. It's it's polaric, or po it has polarity within it. It's the love and hate, the good and evil, the dark, light and dark. And in order, you know, one first has to understand the difference between these two forces. Uh, which is not as apparent as we would like. But this cow force is moralistic. It's um, socioeconomic. It's um, philosophic. It's based on the lower world. It's based on matter, energy, time, and space. It's... Um, it has these components of the emotions and the mind, and it's a, a particular vibration or series of vibrations that encompass it within this this uh, this field of the per the personality. But the, everyone kind of knows what the personality is, or the persona, and so those that worship this type of thing, whether they worship a another human being's personality or their image, or they worship um, or they hate another human being or they hate a, an image or persona of a person, or whether they um, love themselves as a personality, as a as a uh, a being who's has certain quirks and certain, appearances and, and projection of themselves or whether they hate themselves it's all part of this personality that really does nothing but get in the way of truth you see that's the point that i'm trying to make um it's a difficult point to make unless you understand vardenkar the ancient science of out-of-body projection or to, or to the travel, uh, unless you understand the, the workings of this. Um, but to look at a Goddard's chart is helpful. We see that in the lower worlds, we have these various bodies. We have the ego or the little self. Now, I have an ego or little self. You have an ego or little self. We all do when we're living in the flesh. And the inner... The, there's a difference between the inner master and the outer master. You see, the inner master um, is of the body of the Varden. It's pure. It's consciousness in the highest um, sense. It's able to be with all chilas or students at the same time. It's the personal... Um, personification or personalization of the hure in action but it is not really a personality see the inner master is <laughs> dog is barking is an expression of, of individualized expression of of the varden in, in order to lead soul back 
into these higher planes, these higher states of awareness, or to to help awaken soul, not to the astral plane or the causal plane or the mental plane, but to actually bring soul through these areas into the greater state of self-realization on the soul plane and eventually God-realization on the 10th through 12th and, and beyond this. And, and this is the totality uh, or total awareness that Paul Twitchell talked about. You see, now the personality gets in the way of all this, really gets in the way of all this. The human mind is extremely limited. The... the um, the universal mind power itself, which is the mother and father of all minds, is is limited in its scope. So even those that are that appear very powerful and um, are really limited, severely limited. It's like the old saying, "In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king." You see. So when someone has this knowledge. When someone has this knowledge, then they can use this to gain followers. They can use this for their own personal gain, or they may feel that they're being a channel, but they're not necessarily being a channel for the highest. And this is this is what generally happens with these so-called masters and gurus and teachers, and many of them are simply students who have decided to strike out on their own because they gain a little bit of this knowledge and they suddenly realize that the masses know nothing or very little and that they're in a position above them in, in their understanding. This is, is usually a huge mistake for the student who has not been fully trained to go out and strike out on their own um, because now they become responsible for their actions and they become responsible for these people who they really don't and they really don't know what they're doing. So you have various masters. Some of them are, are better than others. We have what's called the mystery schools. And these mystery schools are designed because each soul has its own path. And not all souls are, are ready for Vardenkar, which is the most direct path back to God. It's not the only path. It's the most direct you can reach these higher states of, of God realization, self realization, God realization within a single lifetime, within within a period of years. This is not the case with most paths are indirect. They're the slow route. Um, it's kind of like wandering all over the place. But these mystery school teachers will teach these various mysteries, uh, the lunar mysteries, the solar mysteries. These are our are, are masters at, at their particular calling. Um, they're there to guide souls. Now, I'm not really speaking of the mystery school masters, but there are very few of these masters, and most of the so-called teachers, gurus, and masters have nothing to do with the mystery schools. They may be um, former students, but they've gone out on their own to to teach what they think they know, some of them for the benefit of, they think for the benefit of mankind, some of them uh, out of ego or for, uh, in order to get something out of it. So, you know, you've got this in the land of the blind, the one I meant is king. So you've got all these people that are, that are, that are not fully trained or going out saying that they know truth. And it's gotten even worse with, worse with the new age movement. You've got people that haven't even really studied any one path. They've just they're eclectics, and they've collected different books from different paths and different disciplines, and they put it all together into a big stew, and then declare themselves a, a master, a teacher, a guru. Or uh, it's very popular now to say, "Oh, I'm not a guru. I'm just sharing," you know. But then they um, they end up with all these followers who are listening to their every word. You see, these are like this is like the the first graders teaching the kindergartners, you know. And, um, you know, the masters put up with this because that's the, this is the way it works. This is each person finds what they need because each soul is different. We all have different needs. But when soul finally gets to the point where it's gone through the mystery schools and it's gone through the false masters and it's gone through the religions and the metaphysical systems and it's developed a, a extensive education and it's finally at this point where it just wants to leave Soul is ready now, and it's chosen by God at this point. 
to have an opportunity to get out of here and and claim its rightful place as a god being to go beyond the human state into this god being state um which is far 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 above so-called astral consciousness or astral projection it's far beyond uh you know one meant with you know they talk about cosmic consciousness and and becoming part of the universal mind of God and all this. It's way, way, way beyond that. We're speaking of something which starts in the fifth plane, but really goes into the 10th, 11th, 12th. Not dimensions, but planes. And if you look at the God Worlds chart, um, you can go to Vardinkar, if it's not on the video now, if this is a video and, and you're not listening to an audio. Uh, if you go to Vardinkar to see the chart, it's V A R. D A N K A R dot com. V A R D A N K A R dot com. You'll see a chart on the first page, and then there's a more elaborate one if you look on the side menu. And you can see uh, visually uh, this chart, which, which maps out these planes. And of course, there's a lot more than the chart. The chart is just a basic outline. So you see the. the personality of the individual the personality of the um of the guru or the teacher really has n nothing to do with it it's it's a side issue you see but you have all these masses of people that do not want to have responsibility they don't want truth they really don't in fact i think there was a famous quote i can't well there's a quote from paul twitchell I can't remember the exact quote, but he said something like, the masses even refuse their allotment of truth. So it's like me these meager rations are given out, and people often don't even want their meager ration of truth. And so here I am saying, well, there's a lot more to it than, 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 than what's out there. It's out there, but and yet it's not. It's 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 the secret teachings. Well, now it's out there publicly in a very s small way through Vardinkar, and I say small way, I mean very few people know about this, and yet most people will just walk away. They'll laugh. They won't believe it. They'll be in disbelief. They will. They just can't accept it. They're not ready for it. And for them, they have they have religion and metaphysics and New Age movement, and all these different myriad of of things that, that can keep them occupied. See, they're just simply not ready because Vardenkar is the it's the direct path via out of body soul travel or tuza travel or soul projection, where we project into these various planes, and we find that we are, as soul, our eternal self, our God self, which is not the astral body, or the mental body, or the universal mind, or anything like that, but our, our self as soul, we can project, and we're not stuck in our skulls, we're not stuck in our body, we're not stuck on the astral plane, we're really, um, through the program of Vardenkar, through studying the discourses, and through listening to the talks, and reading the books, and practicing the exercises and the methods, you see, over a period of years, we, we can have these experiences that will liberate, so that we can reach spiritual liberation or spiritual freedom, and we can move on in the cosmic order and, and fulfill our spiritual destiny as conscious co-workers with God. See, none, none of this can happen if we're focused too greatly on the personalities on the on the soap opera see this whole soap opera that was has come down here and who did what and who said what and who didn't do this and who didn't do that and, and you know look at this beautiful uh you know clothing and look at this beautiful house and beautiful car and beautiful wife and how's your sex life and all the, all these things are fine it's not by themselves they're not necessarily bad it's, it's when they become all consuming and 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 God doesn't really matter. The person, God is like a, sort of like a father that gives you things. You know, when people have this type of lifestyle, it can become very empty after a while. It may be fun for a period of time, but this is where some of these people are. They're in this state, 
They don't want to leave it, and therefore Vardenkar has absolutely nothing to offer them. They're looking for a religion with a group of people where they can socialize and and feel spiritual and, and take care of their emotional and physical needs and perhaps mental needs. Usually not even doesn't even go that deeply. And this is the personality that is taking over the individual, the little self, and soul has to sit there and wait. And soul is very patient <laughs> because soul is, is beyond time and space. And so that part of us that, that is truly us, soul, knows all things through direct perception. It It is pure beingness and it is the only part of us that's eternal, you see. The only part of us that's eternal. It's the only part of us that, that truly um, is a part of God. Everything else is temporal. Everything else is is going to come to pass. Pass away. Die. Translate. In, into nothingness. Because this is the nature of the lower bodies. And we constantly are changing them. We're constantly changing our personalities. You know, one lifetime we're a male, the next life we're a female. Maybe we do a few female lives. We go back to male. We have different positions in life. We become very powerful and rich and physical. And then the next thing you know, we're living a life of poverty. You see, we're living a life of poverty, mental retardation, and we are disabled and maybe our limb has been cut off or some or a birth defect or we've had some kind of problem with our mind and we're, it's just a body it's just a lower body and now we're we're going through that experience which can be unpleasant you see and then we go back and forth between these various experiences and if you want to see what kind of experiences just look around you look at the world and you get a good idea of what you've probably been through. Um, and most of them are just middle of the road. You know, frankly, people talk about their their incarnations as Queen Cleopatra and all this nonsense. Most of these people were not Jesus or Cleopatra or St. John. Um, these, are, these are mostly delusions of grandeur. That's not, remembering your past lives is not about that about how many famous people or rich people or powerful people you were. That's a form of entertainment. That's narcissism in a way. Um, most of the time, we've just been everyday people. The lawyer, the the storekeeper, the baker, the blacksmith, the farmer, the factory worker, the seamstress, the washerwoman, you know... Um, and we get an occasional life where we might be the king or the, or somebody of, of so-called affluence and importance. And we go through all these different phases and it really doesn't matter. It's all masks that soul is wearing temporarily, temporarily. And our IQ, whether it's high or low or medium, all of these so-called social markers and personality traits and, and assets are temporal. You see, and people get caught up in this stuff, and it go it works both ends. Some people get caught up in success and power and money, and they're so preoccupied with their financial um, prosperity and their, uh, their sexual fulfillment and their emotional fulfillment and their social fulfillment and and the things of this world give them pleasure and and the fine food and all this stuff. There's nothing really wrong with it per se, except when the person can't live without it, when they're attached to it, and it becomes their their guiding force, their driving principle of life. And then you have the other side of the coin, where you have the person who is attached to being the victim, and they're, woe is me, I'm terrible, I wish, I wish I was prettier, I wish I was more attractive, I wish I had a better mate, I wish somebody loved me, um, I'm not worthy of God, blah, 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 blah. And see, that individual is also caught up in the personality. See, the personality versus the message of Vardin. An out-of-body soul projection. 
when the personality takes over to the point where the individual no longer even sees that they're not the personality, then the individual's lost in this maze of either delight of the senses or or they wallow in self-pity and they wallow in in their own perceived inadequacies. Both of these are, are just vanity in, in different forms. It's like a coin. There's two sides of the coin. And of course you have the middle, which is the person that's, they don't really hate themselves or think they're terrible, but they don't really think they're so great. There's a sort of, and, and so that's, you know, where most people lie. But it's, it's, it's easier sometimes to see the extremes um, to point out a, a concept or, or something. Sometimes it's easier to, to talk in, in, in more extremes just to, to paint the picture. But then we see that this personality, whether it's positive, negative, neutral, um, well, the neutral is where we've, we want to go the middle path. But you see, the personality is not us. It's not the way. It's not the path. It's the dead end. It's the trap. And so, but we have to have a personality in this world to function. And so the personality is not bad. We don't get rid of it. We just recognize, we become detached from it. And we recognize that it is not the answer to life. And this whole thing about know thyself does not refer to knowing your personality and understanding your quirks and, and, and desires and conflicts. And all this stuff is knowing the mind and the emotions and the body. It's of the personality consciousness, but it's not of the high, the soul consciousness or, or beyond that into the God realms. And so becoming acquainted with your personality, while it's fine, um, it's good to look at yourself uh, as a personality and see what weaknesses and strengths you have and, and, and these various things. There's nothing wrong with observation as long as you're detached. As long as you recognize that this is not you, this is an embodiment. This is a temporal embodiment that you're occupying as soul that can actually change rather easily. And sometimes it's not so easy. But um, but this is, this is the ego self or the little self, which is necessary in this world. But when it dominates the individual, when it becomes the thing that it is looked towards, whether you're looking towards a guru or a so-called master, and you're looking at their personality and saying, wow, boy, he looks attractive and he's strong and he looks fit and he looks, and he talks, I like the way he talks and I like the way he presents himself and I like this and I like that you see then then we are looking to the personality of the guru or the person and it gets in the way of the message because what if the messenger isn't so pretty or so eloquent in the way that we think a person a guru or, or a messenger or a teacher should be a spiritual teacher should be what if he doesn't talk the way we think he should talk or act the way he, we think he should act or look the way we think he should look what if he doesn't say exactly what we think he should say? You see, now we got this attachment and this personality, and now it gets in the way, and we can't see the nose in front of our faces. We're too busy looking at this myphobic vision of, of the outer personality of, of the individuals. And the same thing holds true of ourselves. When we get caught up in our own personalities and our own self-judgments, then the same illusion occurs. You know, it's the microcosm and the macrocosm, the, the internal and the external. All of this is, is just a giant paradox, which is really, you know, in a cosmic joke is really, really insignificant. Because now we get into out-of-body travel, or out-of-body two is a projection, where we're leaving the body, and we, and we reach this point, eventually, at the soul plane, or the atma level of self-realization, where we're looking down at all these lower bodies and, and we're now in the field of the pure positive God worlds and we find Satnam, the lord of this region, who's the first true manifestation of God. All these other rulers were just rulers, although powerful in their own right. And we, re and we reach this level of Satnam and now we're in the field of knowingness. See, now we have direct perception. We're no longer dealing with the mind at this level. We're now dealing with direct perception. 
and we know all things and we become um, this pure soul who's no longer um, hampered by the personality, you see. But then we got to come back down. <laughs> we have to deal with all this stuff, you see. So this, this, we develop, we have to learn to develop this detachment from the personality or ego self. We have to learn to develop the spiritual part of us and see the world from this perspective, from the Varden perspective, the perspective of spirit, rather than the perspective of the cow or the negative power, the moralistic, social, economic, mental, emotional, physical component. See, when we see it from that perspective, and that perspective alone, we're really spiritually blind and deaf. Our inner vision, and our, it's like putting on a um, blindfold and a set of earphones, earmuffs, you know. And so the master presents the message to the individual, and the individual usually rejects the master. Why? Because it doesn't fit in with their, with their idea of the proper personality, of the proper the proper package, the proper way that things should be presented and, and how it's said. And then the individual has all these disagreements on minor points, you see. Well, I agree with that, I agree with that, but I don't agree with this, and I don't agree with that. See, now they're, in the, they're trapped in their heads, and, and they can't see that it's the personality getting in the way. Because all, all, all questions will be answered, but they'll be answered in the proper time, in the proper way. It's very important that we get our own answers. You know, people can fire away all kinds of questions, and sometimes they do. And I get emails, and I get letters from people, and they want to know this, and they want to know that. And sometimes I'll answer. <laughs> and sometimes I won't. It depends on what, how sincere they are. But um, usually I, I will say something if I, if I have the time. And um, frankly, you know, most of them aren't, aren't sincere. Um, they think they are. Some of them think they are. But you have to, sometimes I see some of these questions, I have to ask, well, why do they care? What's, what's the difference? It's, it's like, um, you know, you start getting into splitting hairs, how many angels can dance on the head of a pin, and, well, what about this, and what about that, and you said this, but then you said that, and it's really the mind spinning around and around. Now, Understand this, that in the lower worlds, the physical, the astral, the causal, the mental, the etheric, these lower planes, uh, below the soul plane, or the atmalok, we're dealing with duality. You know, there's love and hate, there's light and darkness. Everything exists in opposites, twin pairs. And then you have the neutral, or the middle. And these, 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 these polarities shift back and forth. Um, that's the thing that people have to understand. You know, you might be on top of the world one day, and uh, and then the next thing you know, you're, you think you're in the bottom of the world. Um, this is the nature of polarity. This is the nature of the negative or cow, or, or the so-called god of, of of religion. Is if you even look in the Bible, you'll see the wrath of God. God is loving. Oh, God is vengeful. It's it's you know this is the polarity, depending on who's looking at God, their consciousness. But it, fl it can flip back and forth very rapidly. And so this polarity is not the answer. This is, this, is the, this is the trap. And so when the master says something, or when you read something, if you're coming from, from the mind, if you're or from the astral, then there are all these paradoxes and all these questions. And every time you ask a question, you get an answer. You've got ten more questions. Well, what about this? What about that? It reminds me a little bit of these kids where you, um, you know, they just, Daddy, why, why are clouds in the sky? Daddy, why is the sun so bright? Daddy, why is the sun not bright anymore? You know, Daddy, what, why, what is, why do we have lightning? Daddy, you know, <laughs> why is the grass growing? You know, and the father is like exasperated trying to uh, answer these questions. Uh, some of them are, 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 good i guess but it just gets to the point where it's like okay okay um you know and 
it's probably not the best analogy because maybe the kid would, would get some benefit out of getting answers to the questions. But some people, it's just, it's really, um, they get into this trivia. And in their mind, they, they got to get the answer. They got to get the answer. But then when you give them the answer, they don't really believe you. You see, because it's not from them. It's from external source. So they're right at it again, asking somebody else the same question. Because it's not coming from... Uh, so it's not coming from their beingness or knowingness. It's coming via someone else. And so there's always this unsettling feeling. Like, how do I really know that was true? Is that true? What about this? What about that? And then there's contradictory contradictory evidence because you've got the, the, the world of duality. You've got the paradox. Paradox by its nature. You know, you can argue either way. That's the paradox. That's why... Logic, um, as it's taught in school, is not effective. And of course, it really depends on where you're getting your information from. So this is all a part of the personality. This is all part of the lower nature of, of, of life in the lower worlds. And then you have the, the true worlds of God. You start getting into the nature of soul. And soul is eternal. You see, soul is eternal and... You start getting into seeing, knowing, and being, or beingness. I am, therefore I am. These aren't just words. These are, this is, when you start practicing the spiritual exercises of Vardhankar, and you begin to follow the path, or the program, you see there's a, a change that takes place if you're, if the seeker is sincere. But there has to be that sincerity there. You can't fool God. You can't lie to God and, and, and God will, will fall for it. You can lie to yourself. You can maybe lie to the outer master. You can lie to your wife and your friends and all that. Um, but the sincerity is either there or it's not. And it can be developed. But one has to desire it. You know, I, I give this analogy a lot, and I apologize for those who have heard it before. But it's a bit, life is a bit like building a bonfire. You know, we're, we're given a certain hand, which is our state of consciousness, and the condition, the karmic conditions that we're in in our lifetime. And then we, you know, we might say, geez, rats, you know, I, I don't have that much desire for God. You know, it's not hot enough. Mm, you know, I guess that's it, you know, you know, forget about Varnkar, it's not going to work for me, because I just don't desire God enough, you know, I have a little, little bit of desire, but not enough, well, you know, that's a choice, and it's important that you make the choice, you know, it's your choice, but if the individual finds this to be the case, then they have a choice. They can look, they can either give up and say, forget it, which is fine. I certainly don't want to waste my time with somebody that, that's um, going to fail because they're not interested in God, and then they shouldn't, you know, this is probably the wrong study for them. Just like if somebody wasn't interested in medicine, they shouldn't be a doctor, or somebody's not interested in math, they probably shouldn't be an accountant. Um, so, yeah, if you're not, if you don't like your getting your hands dirty, you probably shouldn't be an auto mechanic. So if you don't really love God that much, you probably shouldn't be in these works. But let's say somebody says, well, you know, I, there's some desire, but it's probably not enough. You see, then they can look at that. And let's say they determine, well, there's some desire. You know, I, I want it, but it doesn't appear that I'm strong enough or desire it enough. You see, that's sort of like having a tiny little fire, or like a tiny, like an ember. Maybe it's barely visible, but you see, you know, if you've ever been to Boy Scouts, or you, if you know anything at all about camping, or starting fires, or any of that stuff, you know that you can build that fire, and usually the way it's done, you don't just throw a big giant log on top of a tiny little ember, you know, you have to build it with little pieces of kindling and dried out grass, and little pieces of twigs and shavings and and eventually you can get that into a raging bonfire but there is effort and work involved in it you see 
You see, the same thing for the spiritual. It really depends on what you what you want and this knowingness. And so people don't understand this. They think that one of the mythologies, and this ties in back into personality, is that you're born, you know, you're born with this divine providence, you know, that, oh, you know, like he's the king, you know, like he was born with this great desire for God. And he was born with this and born with that. Well, there may be some truth to that, but to be very, very frank with you, um, for every person that fits in that category, there's a thousand of them that don't. And yet, it, it really, there's a lot of stories I can tell you about people that became Varden Masters who started off, I guess you could say, on the wrong foot. Um, one of the best stories, I think you probably, you probably already heard it, I know Heather G tells it in one of the videos, is the story of Miller Ripa. And he started out being trained as a black magician when he was a child because his mother wanted to take revenge on relatives that had cheated them and basically made their life miserable for years. And she wanted him to take revenge, so she sent him to a black magician to study. And he learned all this stuff, how to practice black magic, and he ended up wreaking havoc um, on this, on these people and creating fierce storms and, and winds. I mean, he, he basically manipulated the weather using his powers of uh, black magic, which he learned. And so he did this these terrible things, and he ended up killing innocent people, and they starved, destroyed their crops, he had their house collapse on top of them, and just, you know, by creating this tremendous storm, uh, or helping, you know, moving it into the, creating it through the magic. And so, um, you know, it looked pretty bleak for him. And he said he was the he was the the greatest of sinners, but he decided he wanted God. I mean, of all people, right? How dare he? <laughs> Most people would say, "How dare he?" You know, he doesn't deserve God. You know, he says, "Make amends for the rest of his life." But he desired God, and he admitted that he was the greatest of sinners, and he went out on a quest to find a master. He understood that that he needed a master. He needed somebody. To, to show him the way, he wasn't going to find it himself. That would have been extremely difficult, to, probably impossible. And this is something people have to understand. Is the, the master is a way shower. Um, trying to do it yourself is, is, is virtually impossible. Um, so he goes out looking for the master, and, and he finally, you know, spent years suffering, you know, begging for food, starving, you know, homeless, sleeping on the, on the ground. And finally he finds the master after a long search. And what does the master do? The master opens up his arms and accepts him. No, 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 no. Master says, no. <laughs> I won't accept you. So Miller April wasn't going to have that. So he, he offered to do anything, anything, anything. Like, even if he couldn't be a student, you know, and so he ended up building a house for the master. And the master wanted a three-story house made out of stone. And, of course, this is back when um, Home Depot didn't exist and you didn't have all these tool power tools and and um, Miller Reaper suddenly didn't have any help. And so he had to, like, hand-carry these stones and it was back-breaking work. And he built this three-story house for the for the master, even though he still wasn't a chila. And the master took a look at it after it was done, and after a lot of work. And the master said, you put it in the wrong place. I want it over there. And he points to a different hill. So Miller Reap has to take down the entire building, stone by stone, and move them all the way over to the other hill and rebuild the entire thing. Back, blood all over his hands. Back, you know, in terrible pain, crippling work. No help from anyone, no tools. I mean, no power tools or anything like that was really a great tool. And the master keeps doing this and having to move it somewhere else. And and he keeps doing it. And this this is a tremendous amount of suffering involved. And finally, after um, I don't know how many times going through this over and over again, the master finally said, okay, I'll accept you. 
And Milarepa ended up becoming a, a Varda master himself, you see. So the individual, his desire was so great, you see. And so that's the thing about Providence and, well, my personality, you know, we get back to personality. You know, my personality won't allow me to return to God because I'm not, I don't love God enough or I'm not smart enough or I'm not good enough or blah, 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 blah. I've heard all this before. I've been through some of this. It's not from lack of compassion that I speak like this. It's from compassion that I know um, what people go through and how they fool themselves into thinking through the through the personality that it's just not for them. And sometimes it's, it really isn't for them, and, and they shouldn't be listening to this talk. They should just turn it off and find something else. But I just want you to know that that it's your choice. Okay. It really comes down to sincerity and honesty. Milarepa was extremely sincere and extremely honest. Enough to face what he had done, which was terrifying. He had created all this karma. He had made a mess out of things. As he said, as he put it, he was sincere. I'm, I'm the greatest of sinners. He somehow knew, probably through direct perception, through knowing this, he, but he knew that God would not reject him that although he had was the greatest of sinners, that if he was sincere enough and willing to do anything, this was his next step. And it's, it's sort of a bit like a relationship where you love someone dearly. If you love someone completely and unconditionally, you want to be with that individual. You, you're willing to do almost anything to be with that person you know, if they live in another country, you're willing to relocate or have them relocate. Um, if another state, the same thing, because of the love. You want to be with them. You want to be their companion. That doesn't mean 24 hours a day in the case of humans, but I'm giving an, a, a human analogy here. And yet people are afraid to be with God. They're afraid of God. They want to put off God in the, after their death? You know, once I die, once I have a coronary or I get hit by a car or I die from cancer or I die from old age, then I'll be with God? Hmm. See, this is not the lover of God. This is a person who professes to love God but doesn't actually want to be with God. This this is, um, and I'm not trying to put people down, this is just the way most people are. Their desire is so weak, so fleeting, a lot of times when they say they love God, what they really mean is they, they love the things that God could do for them if they can just get in with him or it. Well, they think it's him. God is not a him. God is an it. It's the, the hure. It's the it's the impersonal, the infantomable. But it can be experienced. That's the thing that I want to leave you with. Is it can be experienced, but not in the personality form. There is no, God does not have a personality. The lower rulers do. There are manifestations of God, which aren't God at all. At the lower vibrations, at the, in the lower planes of, of positive and negative. So the personality really has no place. It's, it's really irrelevant. But I tell people this and they don't seem to believe me. Um, they really, 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 really are attached and I understand it. it. It can be difficult because we have to deal with these bodies. But the next time the personality comes and tries to bite you, you know, perhaps you'll look and say, ooh, you know, um, it's a little bit like a child, you know. And the, once you get in, once you kind of get an inside scoop on what the child is doing or not doing or, you know, it's like, ah, you know, okay. So there's an impishness to the personality. The ego does not want to cease to be. It wants to protect itself and, and control things. It, it's the negative power. It's individualized inside the individual. And so soul, because it's such a fine vibration, you know, fine, farther, fine, far finer than, than the astral and the causal and the mental and the, certainly the physical Excuse me. Soul is far finer. So 
because it's so fine, um, sometimes Saul has to sit there, not sit there, but Saul has to watch and wait as the mind outcreates it. The this outcreating of Saul. And um Saul exists beyond the time track. So we really have it all of eternity to figure this out. The problem is we reach a point where we realize that in each moment there's eternity. And so we reach a point where we're ready to return. And um, some souls are not at that point yet. They don't want to um, for whatever reason. Or they're not ready. They want more experiences in the lower worlds of, of a lower nature. Um, they don't want to wake up. Now, there are souls out there who have reached these higher elevated states, such as Rebbe Zartars, who's over 550 years old in the same body. He looks like he's about 26, 27. Uh, Yabal Sakavi, who's even much older, uh, who looks very young. And um, there are other masters, Rami Nuri, Kadadaki, um, who are very ancient. And these masters stay here. They choose to stay here, some of them, um, to serve. But ma many of them go off. They, they live in the mountains. They live in, in spiritual cities like Egem Des, where, where they're protected. Um, their vibrations are so fine. And so the Varda, the Hue Ray, will choose a representative for itself. Um, on earth in the form of, of the living Varden master who's willing who's willing or able to to publicly be around to physically speak with the with the, those interested and we live in an interesting time where we have things like YouTube and and internet services and uh, printing presses and all of these fun things we live in an interesting time where, where this can be made available to a large group of people, um, although most aren't interested in it because they're so wrapped up in, in their own their own um, beliefs and their own groups and their own ideas, which is fine. They certainly have a right to do that. Um, but there are those that wish to return to the God source, the true God source, not the psychic lower planes you know, not the um, the astral, the causal, the mental, and the etheric, but they want to, to return into the, the true heavenly worlds from the soul plane on up. And those are really the ones that I address here today. So this personality just gets in the way. My personality gets in the way. Everyone's personality is pretty much... Um, can be used for the by the cow to to serve the cow, or it can be used by the Varden to serve the Varden. But it's always it's a it's a personality, and I'm certainly very very imperfect in the physical, in the body, the astral body, and the personality of course is imperfect. And this is the nature of of the lower bodies, and this is the nature of personalities. So if someone is placing their attention upon the personalities of the people that they're dealing with, or the they're looking at everything from the perspective of personality and from their own cherished belief systems and dogmatic beliefs, then the person is in a, their own self-constructed prison. And there's nothing I or anyone else can do. They're, they've chosen this. And they can't get out unless they want to. And maybe they're perfectly happy. It could be a really big prison room. You know, they might be in a, you know, with a jacuzzi. and It could be really large. And, and they're perfectly happy. They don't want to leave. Which is fine. It's like the old joke about the the gold chain and the iron chain. You know, one man is 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 a prisoner. And they put a, an iron chain around his ankle. And uh, around his neck, I'm sorry. And, um... And he's very upset. And so he's always looking for a way to break out. He's always trying to figure out how to break out of his bonds. 
And, um, you know, if he sees a stone, he tries to wear down the chain with the stone or he tries to crush the chain by pounding the stone against the chain. And little by little, over a period of quite a bit of time, he finally manages to, to break free of this iron chain. The other man uh, placed around his neck is a gold chain that's quite heavy. Actually, it's, it's heavier than the iron chain. And he's told that it's very, very valuable. It's made out of gold. It's precious. And he's told that people will try to steal it from him. And that he, sh you know, if he values it, he shouldn't let go of it. And he wears it with pride, knowing that it's, it's his chain. And he won't relinquish it. It binds him just as surely as the man with the iron chain. Except one difference. If anyone tries to free him, he will fight them tooth and nail to the death to protect his chain. Because, damn it, it's made out of gold. It's valuable. They're trying to steal it from him. <laughs> so this is the way we are sometimes. You know, This is the way human nature, the personality and the individual, tries to defend itself. It tries to defend its beliefs, its system, because it thinks it's, it has value. It's afraid. To lose itself. Now we don't. The individual never loses himself. This whole idea of disappearing into the void. Or disappearing into nothingness. Or losing your individuality is not true. Soul is an individual unit of awareness. We do not lose our individuality. We actually gain it. Um, the whole thing about losing your individuality. And... and Absor being absorbed into the cosmic current. All this stuff came out of of these these various voids which are on different planes. There are dark regions in between the planes. In particular, the etheric plane. When you're crossing over from the etheric into the soul plane, which is usually done under a master's... Um, master usually accompanies one when they do this for the first few times. But... As some as an individual is transitioning a soul from the uh, theoric, which is the high high mind, into the um, soul plane, there's this area called the void, which is a dark region of darkness. This has been confused with God. It's not God. It's, it's this area of darkness. There's a lot of energy there, a lot of um, consciousness of different nature, and. Um, so people will say that they're disappearing. They think they're disappearing in this void. Now, there are different voids on between different planes. So some people that talk about this are actually having an experience at the astral void from the astral to the causal. And some people have an experience from the causal to the mental and others from the mental to the etheric plane. But the great void is between the etheric and soul plane. That's the biggest void. So you have, all, like again, all this terminology gets confusing. But some of the Eastern paths have confused this with becoming one with God, with disappearing into this void. But this is not soul's true destination. Soul is here to become a conscious co-worker with God, not to become a drone or to be absorbed into the cosmic current. What would be the point of that? Anyway, it's just not, it's not a real occurrence. We're not absorbed in the cosmic current and, and lose our identity um, on the contrary, we be, we soul is a unique being that has its own experiences, its own individuality. Um, we are a drop from the ocean of love and mercy. And we have the same qualities that, to a lesser extent that, that God has. We're not God, but we are gods amongst other gods. And so we have the seeing, knowing, and being and this omniscience and omnipresence and omnipotence, we're very, very powerful as soul. But the problem is, until we've reached these higher states, you know, beyond the soul plane, um, the power that people play with is generally the lower psychic powers, which can be very dangerous and misused. So when I say powerful, I'm not implying that we go out and exercise our psychic powers, and although we can, it's very, it's a very dangerous thing. It's like giving a child a, a loaded gun when they're too young to to understand the responsibility. Um, 
it's really not something that is a safe idea. So I'm not talking about uh, reaching the astral plane and then and then unleashing your your powers. Um, there's a certain amount of responsibility that has to take place. There are spiritual laws such as the law of non-interference, where you don't pray or or try to change the consciousness of another being without their express permission. There's a lot of things going on. A lot of people get themselves in trouble with the personality when they start acquiring the things that they think they wanted and then they get them and then they cause all kinds of karmic debts from, from getting them, from misusing them. I mean, for example, somebody may really want to be the king and have all this wealth and power and, and all these people look up to them and have the ability to make decisions for thousands or millions of people and then they finally uh, reach that position. It may take them a long time to earn that position where they're the king and they got all this money and power at their disposal. And then what do they do with it? You know, Often they misuse it and they create this enormous debt. So they, they basically went into debt and, and worked really hard to earn the right to become king. And then when they become king, they misuse it. And now they've incurred a huge amount of debt. And so that's the nature of power. It's a two-edged sword. It's always been the nature of power. We don't want the cow controlling our lives. Uh, because the cow will always bring us down. It will always keep us in this karmic cycle of, of karma and reincarnation. That's its job, is to hold us down. The cow is the negative power. Um... We want to be a servant of the Varden, which is the the God force, the God power, the pure power, uh, the spiritual power. See, this will uplift us. This will uplift everyone around us. This is where we start following spiritual laws. And the greatest law of all is the law of love. The law of love supersedes all other laws. So this has been a rather longer talk than I imagined it was going to be. But perhaps you can see that the personality, um, my personality, your personality, anyone's personality, generally just gets in the way of everything. You know, when I give these talks, sometimes I, I wish I could say things better or more clearly or, you know, I try. Um, but, you know, we're dealing with the limitations of, of this of the lower worlds and, and my limitations at the physical level and your and your limitations as far as your consciousness and so you'll get what you get out of this if you've listened this far um, and everyone will have a different understanding of what I've said but leaving on a positive note we can listen to these kind of talks all day long we can read books all day long the real process comes the real gains come from the spiritual exercises and spiritual practices where we actually practice these leaving the body and um, traveling into these other worlds and partaking of this consciousness this light and sound the divine spirit and and having our own experiences and then we know without knowing we see without seeing so you really have to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear the message. And if you don't, then it, it doesn't mean anything. So it's the experience that counts. And when you have the experience, um, when you have the, when you gain the consciousness, then, then that's the, that's the true, um, then you begin to, to, to understand because you're, you're having that experience. It's, really hard to say anything without sounding kind of silly the whole thing kind of kind of silly you know when you have the experience you have the experience and kind of talking in circles and that's the nature of the mind it's like a dog wagging its own tail or the dog chasing its own tail or the cat chasing its own tail so the personality is like that it's really a dead end but we have it and so we got to find this middle path and then we become, if we truly love God, we become the hound of heaven. And we become a cliffhanger because we're no longer hanging out with the masses, you know, who are looking for their next, you know, soul is like the 
the prince begging for a crust of bread. You know, here we are, these divine beings begging for, you know, a new car or, or enough money to buy a, uh, some food or whatever it is we're asking God for. And here we are, the prince, or the, you know, destined to inherit the throne. And so we're kind of caught, we can get caught up in this personality thing and, and forget who we really are. And um, so anyway, on that note, I will say, um, I always know there's more to say, but uh, these talks cannot go on forever. <laughs> You'd probably be happy to know. So in that, I will end. Um, I I'll say one last thing. I have to say it. Um, I want you to know that I, as the master, love you as soul. And that this this love factor is beyond the emotions. It's beyond the human love. It's unconditional. It's this great divine love that souls are. The qualities of love, wisdom, power, and freedom. We're more than qualities, but... The ocean of love and mercy where soul comes from and will return and and yet be able to carry down here at the same time. In other words, we can bilocate or be in two places or more at once. These masters are able to do that. They're able to be in the higher worlds and serve here at the same time. But soul, this, this divine love, that's really very, very important. And it's not karmic love. It's not the love that people have for their cats or their dogs or their... Well, I mean, that might be partly divine love. I'm, I don't want to put it down, but it's not a conditional emotional love. But it's more than this. It's it's divine. It's unconditional. Um, that really... That and being honest... And, and sincere to, and loving God enough to want to return. That's really the answer. And you you have it or you don't have it. You can you can develop it. You can make it brighter. You know you can open the flame up, but you have to desire it. And sometimes, as as one of my chilas said, um, you know, soul knows all of this, but the bodies, the lower bodies, the mind doesn't. And there's some truth to that, you know. And I and I have compassion for you, and I understand that it can be very difficult being here in these lower worlds and being lied to and given all these mistruths and misunderstandings. So with that, I'm I'm inviting you, if you'd like, to to examine Vardenkar, if if you have any inclination to. You don't have to, but it's an invitation. So with that, Baraka Bashad, may the blessings be.